Ich darf Ihnen freudig Professor, Pall, Professor Martin Pall ankündigen, der uns in Deutschland, in Europa doch im Bereich der klinischen Umweltmedizin jetzt über fast schon fast 15 Jahre begleitet hat. Unsere ersten Kontakte hatten wir, als er mit seinem biochemischen Verständnis seinen ersten oder ersten Papers über den No-No-Cycle nach Deutschland brachte, der so interessant war, dass NGOs damals die Übersetzung für eine parlamentarische Anhörung durchsetzen konnten und auf der Basis dieser äh, ja, biochemischen Auseinandersetzung mit äh, mitochondrialen Dysfunktionen, mit nitrosativen Stress, mit oxidativen Stress, äh, alles durch, über den Eingang über den NMDA-Rezeptor, äh, kamen wir dann auch ein gutes Stück weiter, soweit wir das dann auch allmählich verstanden hatten. Das dauerte sehr viele Jahre. Hilfreich war dazu sein Buch äh, Explaining Unexplained Illnesses, das immer noch aktuell ist, aber allerdings, glaube ich, vergriffen, aber antiquarisch dürfte man es irgendwo noch bekommen. Äh, es ist sehr interessant, auch heute noch zu lesen, obwohl es inzwischen schon sieben Jahre alt ist. Und er hat uns immer weitergeführt in dieser Thematik und inzwischen hat er einen neuen Rezeptor gefunden, über den er jetzt nun auch äh, Induktion äh, von elektromagnetischen Feldern erklären kann, die letztlich in die gleichen Endstrecken hinein münden. Und ich bin gespannt, wie er das heute sagt. Most of all, I'm lucky to call you friend. I get, my, <clears throat> let me say my interest in, in, uh, in electromagnetic fields, EMFs and microwave uh, radio frequency radiation is a very recent one, but it has progressed extremely rapidly over the last two years, and I think that's basically what I'm going to share with you. Uh, so we'll be talking mainly about how these, uh, these fields work and, uh, and how they can produce various changes in cellular DNA and cancer, but also talk uh, briefly about a number of other health effects which, uh, have been reportedly, which have been repeatedly reported. So uh, one of the great puzzles about this is How can uh, EMFs influence our biology? We're talking about EMFs that are comprised of very low energy photons. So the individual photons do not have enough energy to impact the uh, chemistry of our bodies. And yet, uh, and yet clearly they do influence our bodies. And uh, in the US and international what are called ICNRP safety standards, Uh, for microwave radiation is based on the assumption that they can't, that the only thing they can do is produce heating, thermal effects. And, uh, and therefore, the thermal effects are the basis of all of these, all of these uh, safety standards. And yet, there are literally thousands of studies that have been published reporting biological effects of exposures well within the safety standards, which should not occur. So every single one of these thousands of studies basically says that, uh, that these, uh, these international safety standards are deeply flawed. Um, so the question is, how can this be? What's the mechanism? And that's what I'll be talking about today. Uh, so uh, there's this, uh, an additional type of evidence. In fact, there's several others, but we don't have time to talk about them, um, where you have Uh, it's been known for quite a long time, actually much longer than 30 years, that pulsed electromagnetic fields are often much more biologically active than non-pulsed fields, even when they produce the same amount of heating. So clearly that cannot be explained by heating. And, uh, and yet, we, so we have still another thing that is uh, well documented and uh, clearly conflicts with the, uh, with the heating um, The, the, uh, the heating basis for the international safety standards.